Okay. Hello and welcome to Lulu's Way, healthy food, healthy life. My name is Lulu. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be your host this evening. In order to keep this meeting free from distraction, we ask that all in attendance please mute yourselves unless you're speaking. We also ask that you keep the video mode turned off if you're doing anything other than sitting and participating in this meeting so that we can minimize distraction. In this community, we gather to support, encourage, and, insp and inspire on the benefits of nutrition, weight loss, wellness, and the joy that comes from choosing to serve yourself well. We are not medically trained, nor do we have formal training in nutrition. We come together here for the sole purpose of providing support, sharing experiences, and promoting a healthy lifestyle. It may be wise to check with your healthcare professional with any dietary suggestions or advice you receive from this group discussion. Particularly if you have health challenges, individuals in this group may have different ideas on how to eat healthy. Just figure out what works best for you and do it your way. So today, um, the topic that we chose was uh, food prep and food ideas and recipes. Um, recipes, when I say recipes, um, you know, I don't do recipes. Like I don't mix things together and then have bowls of things with that I, 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 I need to, you know, properly weigh and measure all my food so I don't cook like that. I could cook like that if I, if I was making a single serving and I have done that before. Like I've made like, say, I'm gonna have a bowl of soup so I get out the pan, I put some veggie broth or chicken broth, um, which is on the um, condiments kind of freebie list, you know? And then I would uh, put in seasonings. I would throw in 16 ounces of veggies. I'd throw in four ounces of rice. I'll throw in four ounces of diced up chicken and I'll simmer it until it's heated with all maybe different herbs and stuff. And there I have a bowl of soup, but I don't make like a pot of soup. I just, I just don't do that. Um, uh, you could really do that with any recipe if you wanted to make a single serving. But uh, to me, it's just not that important. I, the, the way that I cook, and I mean, you all know this if you watch my channel. You know that I cook things separately. I, because I like to cook each thing exactly how I like it with the right time. The right, I like this a little dente, al dente. I like this a little softer. I like... And then I just have all my containers of different veggies. And um, uh, I thought we could just talk about maybe veggie prep, different ways to make different veggies. Um, uh, and then, you know, um, I mean, you know, the, like the gr grains and rice are pretty straightforward. You know, you just kind of cook, cook your rice, cook your grains, bake your potatoes or steam your potatoes, whatever. Um, People have been asking me about the Japanese white sweet potatoes. Now, I don't know how many people have access to those. If you've been finding them, I know they have them at Trader Joe's. They have them at, I've seen them at Sprouts and uh, they're at Whole Foods. Um, I even see them at Wegmans, um, but they, in Wegmans, they're called Batata, B-A-T-A-T-A. -T -A -T -A. Or they're called Bonita, B-O-N-I-T-A. I think that just means potato in Spanish, I think. Oh, um, I don't know. Japanese. It's not Japanese. No, I don't think. Yeah, it's just what they call them. I don't know. Um, but I find that those ones at um, Wegmans that are called Bonita, they're huge. They're big, huge ones. And so now I've been eating those and preparing those over the years, and um, uh, I've landed on my favorite way to make them. So. Um, I was making them, like if you get the big ones, you want to kind of cut them in half because they're going to take forever to cook. A big, they're huge. And I'm all, I also see that like there's some like oxidation that happens and they get like a kind of a, a grayish color and it's just, it's, it tastes the same, but it's kind of unappealing. Um, so I have found, and then also the bigger one, the skins are tough. So I was always getting the bigger ones. I was cooking them and I was just dealing kind of with the color. And then the skins, I was peeling them because the skins were kind of thick and tough. But I've come to discover that the best way that they, they come out the best for me is I get the smallest ones, I get like the long skinny ones, and I bake them. So I can't do that on the road. So if I'm on the road, 
I'm going to put them in the instant pot and depending on and it as far as the time goes it just really depends on how what size they are how many I put in there uh, but in the toast in the little toaster oven I love to line, line them right, right up on the rack like four of them right on the rack and you know they take maybe 45 minutes and to me the skin is nice and tender because it's small it's thin because it's on a small potato and I, I haven't opened it so it doesn't oxidize and it, um, it for me it comes out perfect um, so um, anyway so what you know I have been as I've, as I've shared here before no, I, I am having eggs eggs for breakfast and fish for lunch or fish or chicken for lunch, fish or chicken for dinner. One or the other. I like to kind of try to have the fish once a day because the fish is like a really good protein pack for the fat and calories, which, which is really low um, in comparison to the other proteins. So I have some pictures that I've been taking over the past because re remember I did that video on all the different breakfasts? So I took my I took a picture of my breakfast like every day for seven days and I did a breakfast video and people really enjoyed that and people are saying, Well you should do that with lunches, you should do that with dinners. It's just like, haven't you seen enough of <laughs> have you seen enough of all this food? But I guess not. I mean people want to see it, you know. So I've been taking pictures, but I haven't done a video. I haven't done a video on it. But um although a lot of the pictures look the same, it looks like the same thing, only different. Um, there is kind of like a, a, a method that I just wanted to share. So I'm hoping that I can screen share some of these pictures. So let's see if I don't screw this up. Oh, I think I, I think I can do it. All right. So, uh, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So this meal that I had is I had I don't know if you, I think I did a video when I made that kale and I made that bok choy and I made that um, rutabaga. So I had a little bit of each. So it came out to 16 ounces. I cooked all three of those things in the pressure cooker. And then I had the four ounces of the cooked grains in the middle. And then I had a little tiny bit of chicken left. And I said, I'm going to open up a can of, I have, I get by mackerel in the can. So that's what those kind of those long skinny things are. They look like sardines, but they're not. They're just fillets of mackerel. And I know mackerel, oh, when somebody first suggested that I have mackerel, I was like, oh, that just sounds yucky. I don't know. It sounds like fishy. Like, I don't know. I was just thinking of fishy. Anyway, it's not, it's not fishy. It's very mild. Um, and then, oh, also the carrots. I see the rainbow carrots there too. I made those with the smoked paprika. I did those in the oven. I can tell by looking at those, those are in the oven. So I made all these veggies, took a little bit of each for the 16 ounces, and then I just did my four ounces of, uh, just mixed it with the chicken and the fish. Now let's see if I can, um, now how do I, do I have to stop and start it all over again? Um, yeah. I do? I think, I think so. Okay. Unless you make a montage. Oh, hey, about the mackerel, is, yes. there, is there bones in it? No. Nope. Not even little ones? Nope. Okay. Um, so I used to buy the one packed in oil, just thinking I could just, I just put them in paper towels and kind of wring them out, right? And all the oil that's in there, like, I want to have it because that's all fish oil, you know? But that's a lot of oil. And I don't want to yeah. use that, like, instead of my oil serving because it is watered down oil because of the water from the fish so um but i did find one packed in water and it's it's very very similar to uh tuna it feels like the it feels like the dryness of tuna the consistency of tuna and the strength of fish it, it's it's very similar to tuna and okay. um i think the kind that i like it's wild caught um, is, I think it's in the description of my videos. You know, that long Amazon, I get them from Amazon. I get like a case of them. And, um, and then I just always have them. They're great for the van too, you know? So, um, so that was that one. Okay. So now 
this one here was say the next day. So now uh, I still have a little bit of everything for, from the veggies that I made. I also put on some um, snipped chives for my garden. And that's now I didn't have to have the canned fish anymore because I had bought fresh. Now I baked the fresh. That was that looks like cod. So it was baked the cod. That might be haddock. And then you can see the, the white sweet potato too. And then with the oil. So that's like, I. this is what I do. I have this big pie, pie plate. I assemble all the stuff from the, uh, from the fridge. And um, I put the whole pan right in the oven and it heats. And then I bring it out and I eat out of it. So it just, for me, it works out perfect. Um, So now this is the next day. So now I'm all out of I'm all out of um, bok choy and I'm all out of kale now. <laughs> so now it's just the rutabaga and the carrots. This is probably the end of it. And there's a same of that fish that I made the day before. Some more of the rice. There's my snip chives from the garden, and that's that one. So I guess what I'm trying to convey here is that you know you just move along your things in the order that you know you want to pay attention to what's going to spoil what needs to what what's been sitting there the longest and and you just um <laughs> nicole this is making me hungry <laughs> nicole um uh okay so now the next day i made the roasted cabbage in the oven with the smoked paprika i had that piece of haddock and then the rice, and I had a little side of mustard, which is a freebie, had my oil on it. That was a delicious meal. So now clearly all those other veggies are all gone. I've moved on to now the cabbage. So now that wasn't the whole head, but you know, it was pretty close. It was pretty close to the whole head. Um, so then the next day I cooked some broccoli. But I can also see that there's some of the cabbage too, because there was some cabbage left. This is the time I bought the halibut. I splurged and got the halibut. I can tell by looking at it that's the halibut. Um, would I get it again? Nah. I, 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 for me, the the cod and the haddock, um, I enjoyed more. Um, and and this is a lot more. This is like a delicacy. This halibut. It was like I don't know like $29 a pound or something. And I got a piece of it just to see. And it, and it was it was good. It was good, but I don't need it again. Uh, and this time I switched it up with the sweet potatoes. I usually go in between the sweet potatoes and the grains. But there's, you know, there's all kinds, you know, the grains, that, that grain mix that I make, the basmati rice, wild rice, um, uh, quinoa, and farro. Um, uh you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, how often do I go to the market? Oh, twice a week. Oh, twice a week. One time is for like a big one and one's for like a medium sized one. <laughs> um, oh, so I look at the dates. I look at the dates on my packages. That's how I determine. Like I, like I went shopping um, the other day. I got green beans, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts again. <laughs> Uh, those pitch, those ones in the pitches, those pitches were from another time, but I just got them just, so I, I looked at all three bags and I said, I'm going to cook two of these now, not all three. I looked at the dates and I picked the two with the closest dates. Those are the ones that I cooked and they're just about gone. I've had, I've been eating them for two days, but I think I'll probably get another meal out of it and then I'll, then I'll cook the broccoli. And that's just how I manage the, um, manage the food. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is the day I made the eggplant. Remember the eggplant? I think I did a video on the eggplant. So instead of having 16 ounces of eggplant, I opened up a can of artichoke hearts, and you can see the artichoke hearts in there. So I made up my veggie serving with artichoke hearts and the eggplant, which was very, very delicious. And that's the halibut. That's I see it. I diced it up into chunks. Um, that's so when I when I heated it up, I guess because it was kind of thick. That's what it was. It was, 
it was a very thick fillet so I cut it up so it would heat better um, and then the uh, the Japanese sweet potatoes and of course my oil and I've been putting the chives on everything and it's really funny you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me but so you know how it says on the free list uh, under the condiments it says herbs so herbs are a freebie so I consider chives no I don't consider chives an herb chives are an herb okay so when I don't use that as part of my measurement for my veggie because I use it as an herb which brings me to my breakfast because the breakfast you know we don't do I don't do veggies at breakfast but I've been putting the chives in my eggs which is really delicious and um, it feels like I'm having like a veg it feels like I'm having a veg in my own now out in my garden I also have green onions so I have a whole bed of green onions but those are a veg even though they're the same gosh darn thing <laughs> Except one is just bigger than the other one for me one is an herb and one is a veggie so I don't put the green onions in my eggs in the morning because I don't do veggies in the morning but I do chives so that's just um, why I'm having I get chives on on all my meals hey Lulu do yeah. you do you do garlic uh, occasionally occasionally I do garlic I don't do a lot of like cooking in a pan much and also sure. like uh um I'm sorry, do you grow garlic? Oh, do I grow garlic? No, I don't grow garlic. Okay. I don't. Is is garlic where would you consider garlic? Ah, uh, I would consider that just like a like like an herb. I would consider yeah. it like a yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't weigh it. The reason I said that is because when you grow garlic, um at some point you before you harvest, it throws out a skate, which has the oh, seed the pot scapes. on it. And the skates are really good. Oh, yeah. Like they're an onion, oniony kind of thing. Yes. Have you ever had them? Yes, because down at Whole Foods, when it's the season, when it's the right season, like when all the yeah. garlic is doing those, creating those scapes, they sell bags of garlic scapes. Yeah. So what would you consider those? those I would consider those, I would use those as a vegetable, I guess. But maybe not. I don't know. I guess I, don't know it, either. That's I guess why it I would asked. be an herb. I don't know. But it, it's oniony, right? So it might yeah. be a nice option as well. But anyway, you, sorry. But would you cook distract. that? Would you cook those? Do you cook those or you eat them? Yeah. Uh, I think if I was putting them in a salad, I would cut, probably cut them up in my salad as an onion, like like as a veg. But if you were cooking them, they'd probably be cooked with other veg. You know. Um, I don't know. I, think, I don't think you'd eat that much of it that it would like exactly it exactly so. yeah exactly okay so, so the, okay. so the last one was the eggplant with the artichoke hearts so now the next day I had the rest of the eggplant a couple of artichoke hearts that were in the can and then I cooked a batch of carrots because I didn't have enough eggplant for another meal so now I had a two pound bag of baby carrots and I can tell I did not roast those, that I put those in the uh, Instant Pot. So they're kind of like steamed. And there is, I think that might be the last serving of halibut. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the oil and my uh, chives, delish. Delish, delish. Uh, oh, this is a breakfast that I had one day this week. I put hard boiled eggs on rice cakes. I never did that before. It worked out pretty good. That's two eggs, three rice cakes, and six ounces of blueberries. It was a good, it was some salt and pepper. Anyway, there's just an idea of um, there's your grain and your protein and your um, fruit. You know, worked for me. Uh, the last time I traveled, in, when I was that, oh yeah, that was definitely in my van because I, that square place plate is in my van um, I just made the hard-boiled eggs so I wasn't cooking eggs in the morning so that worked out really well for me so uh, also there's those overnight oats that I do I mean it's as easy as can be you just get a little dish two ounces of um, oatmeal some salt some cinnamon three and a half ounces of water and then you just cover it and let it sit overnight then the next day, it's it, the next morning, you just have it. You can put apple in it. You can put 
you, you know, nuts, if you're eating nuts, I'll be, I'll have my nuts back one day, but it's not today. <laughs> um, so, okay, let me see what else I got here. Just a couple more. Let's see what this one is. Okay, so this one is haddock. Um, the broccoli that I that I had just made with, in that last meal, and that's all riced cauliflower. So what I do is I take the whole package of cauliflower, I put it on a little uh, cookie sheet, and then I sprinkle it with garlic powder, salt and pepper, and smoked paprika, of course, and I just cook it in the oven. I just bake it like 350 for like maybe 20 minutes, 15. And um, so I used part that, so it almost looks like, it almost looks like rice, but it's cauliflower on the broccoli with the sweet potato. The, bro the rice cauliflower is good because it comes in a 16 ounce bag. So it's basically like a veg serving, you know, so you could just like make as easy as it could just be that easy, you know. And then when you add rice to it, then it's, uh, it just feels like this massive bowl of rice, you know. Um, Let's see here. Um, let's put this one's next. Okay, this one is chicken. I see the little squares. I cut the chicken with with scissors. Uh, that was the carrots that I made. Now I was just like, oh, I'm gonna have 16 ounces of, of carrots because I had so many of them cooked. And then again, the sweet potato. It can be the orange sweet potato. You can do this with just white, regular white potatoes. Just, you know, steam them or roast them in the oven, you know? Um, if you like just white potatoes, that works so too. And then the oil and the chives I put on. Um, so about, um, uh, roasted potatoes, I'm telling you, you just get like, I have like the small cookie sheet that fits in my little toaster oven. Um, I spray the bottom. So if you use Pam spray, use Pam spray. I have one of those dispensers that I, that I spray. I use, use that like Pam. And then what I do is I put all the seasonings that I want on the, cut side of the potato like I get the little the little red potato or the little gold potatoes and I cut them in half and I put them cut side down on the pan so since I want the cut side down to be seasoned I put all my seasonings right on the pan after I spray it so I salt I pepper whatever whatever you want rosemary if you want smoked paprika if you want garlic powder if you want um you know, an Italian mix with oregano, what if you want them to be like Italian-y. And then you put them all cut side down in a single layer. And then you just put those in the oven, like 400 for about 30 minutes. And they are all brown and crispy. And all that, all the seasonings are stuck, stuck to it and crisped up. They're delish. I don't make them very often. I, I guess I just, I'm a sweet potato girl. <laughs> but... You can make up, a, you know, one of those little bags, those little one pound bags you get, or I don't know how, you know, those little bags of the, the my favorite are the gold, gold potatoes, because they're like yeah. creamy. They, they almost, it's almost like they have butter on them, you know? Um, and then, um, you know, you might get like, you know, three or four meals out of that. I mean, it is 16 ounces, say it's 16 ounces of potatoes. It seems like it would be four, but when you when you cook them, it, they get lighter, so it might not not quite be four servings, but it's a lot. So you can just do that all at once. Now you're set for four. You could even have those in the morning with eggs, like hash brownish, you know. After they were all browned in the oven, you know, you could dice them up and cook them up with eggs, uh, and have your fruit on the side. Um, uh, those potatoes with the roasted cabbage would be. Fabulous, say part cabbage, part roasted carrots, and then the potatoes and like, uh, you know, it's almost kind of like a boiled dinner type, type feel, you know. Um, let's see what else I have here. Um, okay, so now there's the rest of my carrots. And now I made the, oh, this was just, this is the new batch. This is the ones I just bought, I told you. I bought green beans. Brussels sprouts, and it was the broccoli that had the latest date on it. So the broccoli is still there. I haven't cooked that yet. Um, this was yesterday's lunch. I have a grain at lunch for now. Um, 
I've had a grain of lunch for years as part of my maintenance. So now as I needed to reduce a little bit, I changed some of my options and that worked for me. That worked. It took three pounds off my first month. Um, but if, if the rest of it's not coming off, then I'll, I'll drop that grain at lunch. But I didn't think it was necessary because I was going to reach. This is my, this is what's going on. Okay. So there I was beach bum of the year. I got the award and everything, got the trophy <laughs> and, um, I put on six pounds. I came home and I was like, well, hello. So I knew I, I knew I was going to get back into my regular lifestyle. That was going to be much more active. So I didn't reduce the quantity of my food, but I changed a lot of my choices and, and it made, makes a big difference. So I was down three the first month. Then I hurt my knee, right? So now I'm not, you know, I'm not doing everything that I was doing. I mean, I'm, I'm this close to being better. I'm this close to being a hundred percent, but it's not like I get the, I can still get the shooting pains and especially when I lay down. But, um, so I don't know if, because the first month I was home, I was very active as usual and the three pounds came off. And now this month I'm not as active. I mean, I'm, I'm active, but I'm not as active. So, uh, perhaps that, but I, but I don't make changes in the middle of the month. I don't hurt my knee and say, Oh, I need less food, you know? I'm, or, or, oh, I went to the gym, I need more food. I don't do that, you know? So um, June 1st is right around the corner. I have all the rest of my life, okay? I got all the time in the world. June 1st will come. If, if, it, if it hasn't budged, um, I will drop the grain at lunch. But for now, my lunches look like dinner, same exact thing. And that's where I, that's where I maintain very well. Um, so let me see what else I got here. Got a, a couple more. Oh, this was my breakfast this morning. So I I cut up um, some four ounces of sweet potato. I put it in the pan, sprinkled it all with cinnamon, and then I threw in two eggs, two beaten eggs. I let it all set. I folded it in half, put it on my pan with some grapefruit and blueberries. It was like it was like French toast. <laughs> it's like Lulu's version of French toast, except it was sweet potato instead of bread. But um, so that breakfast worked for me. So let's see. I think I have one more, and that would be. I think it would be today's. Oh, tonight's salad. Hi. How many salads have you seen of mine? But here's one more. It looks the same. That's my big ass salad. <laughs> I got the avocado. I got the spring mix, I got the nori sheets, the shredded carrots, shredded cabbage. Um, I have uh, radish, um, grape tomatoes, um, uh, red onion. Uh, I think, I think, oh, I, I was, I went, by the time I got to the beets, the jar of beets, I was already at 16. So I was like, oh, no beets in the salad tonight. Uh, and then I just cut up some chicken that was cooked in there, um, and then some sweet potato, put my olive oil on, some balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper. It worked really well. So I hope you, I mean, I hope you got some ideas. I, how, how did, I mean, it's important to manage it, to manage it well, you know what I mean? Because, you know, we spend a lot of money on this food and none of it's going in the trash. And when I think back to my past, how many loads of produce that I bought and brought it all home with the intentions of starting a diet and eating well. And then by the end of the week, it's all in the trash because <laughs> it's rotted. You know, um, that does not happen. I, I'm not, I'm not like, Oh, I'm not in the mood for that tonight. I'm going to, I don't want that. No, it doesn't matter. I'm, ha I'm having it, you know, um, because I don't want to waste anything because I, you know, I pay a lot of money for food. We all do. And um, I just want to manage it well, and I want to uh, just keep a rotation. I don't want to be at the store all the time. Uh, so, you know, as far as shopping, just check your dates. Check your dates. Reach in the back for those bags in the back. You're going to get like a four-day different date, four days out from the one in the front, you know? And it's just like, just go in here and grab it. <laughs> and, um, 
and and then I just I'll save the carrots for last because carrots will last a long time so that's I buy those because that's gonna be that's got the, sh the shelf life in the fridge and if I'm if I'm in a, a situation where I'm not getting to the store and I'm out of veg then that's that that's my last thing I cook you know nope the next to the last thing would be things from a jar or a can which would be I don't do much from jars and cans because I just don't think they're very delicious but it's the artichoke hearts I enjoy those are also in the freezer and then the frozen veggies you know I don't do those very often but just to have a few packs in the fridge in the freezer for when you run low or when you just need like a couple of ounces of something and like I, I'm going to the store this afternoon and I just need a cup and then that that's when I'll open up a can of artichoke hearts to to finish out a meal if I know I'm going to the store in the afternoon but I usually don't get myself that low you know and um you know I just you know I do chicken like you know probably three different ways you know three different ways like but I it's you it's baked in the oven and you know, it's this whole smoked paprika thing, or sometimes it's just like a sage, um, sage and uh, garlic. And then I have that, those kind of Indian spice mix that I enjoy. I'll put that on sometimes. So I do, sh I do mix it up with that, you know, and, um, uh, um, and you know, even to have like a whole fry pan full of veggies, stir fry, stir fry, and then throw in a couple of eggs. You know, throw in a couple of eggs, throw in some rice, and you get vegetable fried rice. You know, put some uh, ginger, ginger and garlic and um, uh, soy sauce. Soy sauce is a freebie, you know. Um, what do I season? Spaghetti squash. You know, when I make spaghetti squash, I usually put it in the Instant Pot, and then I use the fork to scrape it all out. And I just use it like all the other veg. I, I just put it in the in the dishes with other things. Um, you know, it might be spaghetti squash with some broccoli. Smoked paprika, well, of course. I just like smoky. You know, I like that smoky flavor. So um, that's why I love smoked paprika. <laughs> and uh, I like it on the fish. It's really good on fish. It's good on chicken. Um, I usually don't cook my veggies in it unless I'm roasting them. If I roast them, it usually ends up on it. Uh, like the eggplant that I did, the carrots that I do sometimes like that. Um, and I just never get sick of any of it. I love every bite of it. I don't get sick of it. It's just all, everything's done perfectly. It, I get the, the heating time per perfected in the toaster oven. Like I know exactly. Um, how long to heat heat it um when i'm in my van i don't heat it i'll eat that meal cold it's just no big deal it tastes good cold too all all those dishes i showed you were all heated except for the salad and um and if they were if i have them in my van they, they look the exact same they're just not heated and to me they're just as delish so um did i was there any other questions did i see them all um Smoked paprika, spaghetti squash, artichoke hearts, bok choy, nori. Yeah, nori is great in a salad. I love how it's like crispy, almost like paper, when you're cutting it up and putting it in. But once it sits with everything, it gets it gets limp and it gets really chewy, 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 like uh, sushi. The outside of sushi. You know how that gets chewy? Yeah. Well, when they first roll in that up, it's like like a crispy sheet of paper. And then it gets because the rice touches it, it gets all, it gets softer and chewy. I like it. Uh, how often do I go to the market for fresh veggies? Yep, probably twice a week. Yeah. So that's what I have for this, and um, I hope I hope you found it helpful. And Barb, do you have any um, any uh, thing that you would like to add? And then I'd love everybody yeah, to I'm just. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up my yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna go off a, a couple of things that you said. Um, on how I would do, I do it yeah. a little bit differently. And I got this from you for the Japanese sweet potato. I pan fried it actually this morning. I have a uh, sweet potato with egg, like, like you did, but I fry my eggs. 
Um, and, and then I put it over sweet potato and cut it all up and that's how I like it. When you put the sweet potato in the pan, was it raw? Yeah, ah. because you're right. The, um, the, if you, when I do it in the instant pot, they get that, you know, if I was prepping for, you know, a van trip, I would do that, but, or not actually. Um, but I got the little ones too. And then I just cut it up and I just diced it up, threw them in the pan with some water and some spray. And uh, well, spray then just a little bit of water to steam them, covered it, and let them fry up, and they were delicious. And yes. then I did the egg after that. So and they cook uh, surprisingly fast, don't you think? Faster than regular potatoes. Yes, they do. Because I do it when I'm on the road. If I'm not doing them in the instant pot, I cube it yeah, and I do them in water. I call it steaming it really, like they're like steaming. Yeah. And it's just it's it's amazing how quick they cook. Yeah, I did. I saw that. That's why. I, I saw it on your video. So, oh, okay. Yeah, this is this is all you. <laughs> uh, and then for uh, seasonings, uh, one thing that I do is I don't care for smoked. I tried your smoked paprika. I gave it away. I didn't like it. Um, if you lived closer, I'd have given it to you. Uh, <laughs> but I, I picked up by accident hot paprika. Um. Now, that's interesting because it, it's not very hot at all. But it, just a little bit of something, something. You know what I mean? I've never heard of that. Food. Neither had I. I just saw paprika. I didn't even see the hot, and I got it home. I was like, oh, no. But uh, it's not that hot. I, I use it as much as you use your regular smoked paprika. Oh, I'll have to try yeah, that. Yeah, it's very good. And then for the overnight oats, um, one thing I do for that is, um, especially when I'm camping and it's cold, like in the morning maybe, is I put my overnight oats in a mason jar. And then I can put that mason jar in some water, hot uh -huh. water, and cook it. Because mason jars won't break in the water, right? That's what they're built for. Right. And then and then I warm it up. And then like on a cool, on a cool morning, because I, I camp on shoulder season. So um, it's just a nice way to have a hot meal. So yeah. just one That's more idea. That's a great idea. idea. And then also something that you said for avocados, if they get too ripe, um, say you bought six of them and they all ripened at the same time, even though you tried to get different, whatever, uh, throw them in the fridge. Right in the fridge. Don't put them That's in the fridge day. when you get home. When you get home, when they're, when they're hard, keep them on the counter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Only when they're ripe. When, Only they, when, when they're, they're ripe. When they're ripe, when you can dent it, when you can really push your thumb in it. Yeah. Put those right in the fridge and then they just stop ripening. Yeah. Yeah. And then they'll last. And then the last thing I wanted to add, um, you had mentioned soy sauce. If anybody's gluten free, you can use tamari instead, yep. um, and that's a gluten free option for soy sauce. And honestly, you won't tell the difference. Even that liquid brags too. Oh, liquid sorry. brags, liquid brags. You, you heard of liquid yeah, brags? Yeah, liquid brags. Yeah, well, liquid aminos. Aminos. Brags, yep. liquid amino. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. That also is a, is a, a good option for gluten free. Good. And it's all natural, so yeah. Um, yeah. And if so, anybody else is gluten free, I want to you to consider the farro that I use in my grain mix, that's that's wheat. So that is that is not gluten-free if you eat gluten-free. It is not. But then you just, you can just do... I hear it's really good, but I haven't had it because I'm gluten-free. So, yeah, yeah. Um, was, sadly, sadly for me. But that's okay. Yep. So anyway, that's that's what I had. All your ideas are great. I, I uh, do similar to you... Um, Oh, one of my seasoning blends, and I think I've talked about this before, but I get the glass jar or um, organic seasonings, but it doesn't have to be organic. It could be anything, but whatever container your seasonings, save one, and then I, and then you can make mixtures of what you like. Yeah. So I make a blend of onion powder, garlic powder, and pepper, and equal parts thereabouts. I don't weigh anything. Right. So um, they all have different densities, so it wouldn't matter. So I just kind of look at the color and that, that, you know, just and then I mix it all up. And then then I only have to take one thing out to the grill. Right. Instead of carrying three spices. So just to make life a little bit happier. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because a lot of time so, I make chicken, I use uh, salt, pepper, sage, garlic powder and smoked paprika. And I bet you I could make a mix of those five things and just have the one thing. Yeah, simple. Well, yeah, I mean, yours is all right there, especially when you're in the van. But I'm like out in and out uh, the door. It's like grill a lot this time of year. So, 
that's all. Yeah, that's all I have. Thanks, Barb. Um, you're welcome. Is um so yeah so anybody well you know we can talk about anything, but if you want to if you have any um any tips in the kitchen that would be helpful things that you make that's you know keeps your food clean and delicious would love to hear it and um and if you if you want to contribute to this conversation in another way um on topic of you know food and weight loss and nutrition and treating yourself well serving yourself well then just raise your hand um okay next is Dana. carol hi carol hello carol hi hi everyone um i i liked kathleen's point about the purple cabbage i don't tend to do that but i but i want to um start doing that because I do a lot of salads and I like making them colorful, like, like Kathleen was saying, and, and, um, I like getting protein in there. And so salads are my, kind of my go-to, um, <clears throat> when we have the stuff in the house to do that. Um, and, and the greens, I, you know, a lot of times we just get romaine, but I, I do like getting the mixed greens sometimes. I have a hard time though with, you know, when you buy those, it's only the two of us. And sometimes it's just me because my husband doesn't always eat, want to have a salad for lunch um, or dinner, although we do sometimes. But, um, and they go bad if you don't use them. There's a lot in those in those tins. And if you don't use them, then they're going to go bad. And, um, and I, I can't stand to waste food. The other problem I have is if I have like this morning, I made a scramble with, um, with spinach I had left over bag spinach. So I wanted to use that. So I put it in a pan. I cooked it down. I, um, I actually diced up, um, a little bit of ham that we had from, um, the other day and, and eggs. And I had a scramble and, um, it was three eggs, but there was so much because there was so much spinach in it that I actually, and that's the other thing I'm kind of into is mindful eating or, or, you know, just being aware of uh, when, you know, that switch goes off and you're not hungry anymore. I like to eat when I'm hungry. So sometimes I eat later in the morning and, um, and I like to be aware of when I'm not hungry anymore. I don't, I don't like to be full. So, um, I actually have, and I know this is kind of going against, um, you know, weighing and stuff, but I actually eat less probably than I should, but I'm not hungry. So, you know, I was brought up, we were brought up, well, maybe my sister Barbara, Jean, was 11 and a half years younger than me, you see. So she probably didn't have to eat everything on her plate. But us, <laughs> us older ones did, you know. Um, anyway, so <clears throat> and that's been tough getting over that, you know, because, you know, you don't want to waste food. But if I eat, if I make a great big portion, then I, I eat until I'm satisfied and then it's in the fridge, not more than two more days, because then I have this mental thing and I just can't eat food that's been in my refrigerator for more than a couple of days. I just feel like it's starting to decompose and that kind of turns me off. So um, that's really about all. I, I like roasted vegetables. I like putting vegetables out on the grill. Um, or I have an indoor grill, so, you know, they, I can kind of grill it up that way. Um, and soups, you know, now it's getting warm, so we're not going to be doing soups anymore. But I've got a great uh, vegetable soup. I, I think it's like a, it, it grew off of Rachel Ray's, one of her zero point soups or something like that. But just you can put any vegetables into a soup and and um it's been a it's been a trial for me although my husband does love my vegetable soup and again you know i i, I have to 
I have to make it kind of small because even with the soup after two or three days, I'm just like, yeah, that's not, that's, that's done, you know? So that's too bad. But, um, anyway, that's about all I have. You know, right. soup usually freezes well. So, you know, you could, you could always just, yeah. you know, when you make the pot of soup, you could put like a couple of containers in the freezer and then, and then work on what you have. And then you just always have that. You don't do like frozen could, food. Yeah, I could do that. And actually what I think I would do with that though, is make it like emulsify it and make it a soup stock, you know, for something else that I was making because, um, I don't know, I'm just kind of weird like that, you know? Yeah. That so is weird. That as my sister, but my childhood because I, I don't like frozen soups either. My father used to freeze the chili all the time, and then we'd have chili left over. Do so, you have freezer yeah. burn? Yeah, it was bad. Bad. Yeah. I don't know. And um, pea soup. Yeah, and pea soup. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like fresh pea soup and I like fresh chili, but don't freeze it. Um, I we just gotta thank you, Carol. Yeah. yeah thanks, Carol. Um, we just got a question from Christy real quick on how to cook boiled eggs so that they, uh, so that you can take the shell off them easily. Yeah. So yeah. I'll give two ways that I do it. First of all, if you use the instant pot and you can go to the files under instant pot and it tells you the times, cause I can't think of it off my head. Instant pot for some reason makes it really easy to they shell fall eggs. Off. They fall off. They fall off. Yeah, so if you have an Insta pot, that's the way to do it. They just come eggs. off in big, huge pieces. Five, yeah. I, the way that I do them, and I've only just started doing this, a single layer on the bottom of the Instant Pot with some water down there. On the no rack. On the rack. Yeah. Uh, when it gets to pressure, five minutes on pressure. So you set the timer yeah. for five minutes. Five minutes when it reaches pressure, the five minute timer starts. When the buzzer goes off and it's been pressurized for five minutes, then you uh, slow release for five minutes. So you don't instant release it. You don't, Ugh. you just, you just, that, I'm telling you, they come out perfect. And yeah. and then, so five minutes, so then I, I you know, the, the timer will start counting, um, you know, the time that it's, it's, so it's just, it's not building pressure anymore. So it's just naturally releasing a little bit. So after five minutes, you just get a little, and then they just seem yeah. to be done perfect. Yep. So, but Christy, if you don't have an instant pot, what I do in, uh, I boil water and I get it to a roaring boil and then, oh, you do. Oh, good. So for those that don't, I get it to the water to a roaring boil, then carefully put the eggs in. And there's something about when you put eggs, cold eggs into it, it pulls it away from the into boiling water, it, it pulls itself away, not physically, but uh, from the shell, and it makes it easier to peel. But all bets are off if you have like really farm fresh eggs, they're bare. So I haven't tried those yet on the Instant Pot, but I plan to this summer when I go to my farm, and then we'll see how that works out. But yeah, I would Instant Pot always. Yeah, anyway. they, they, I've been very pleased. They just They just so easily peel. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know they were going to. I, I just was like, I was like, oh, I should make, I should have high boiled eggs in my van sometime, you know. And then I thought, yep. you know, I'll just because I usually do them in a pan. My, the way my mother always made them was you put the cold eggs, you put cold eggs in cold water on the stove, and then as soon as it comes to a boil, <laughs> you put the cover on and you shut the heat off and let it sit for twenty minutes. That was the way my mother always did it. All right. Did they peel easily? Uh, not easily, but yeah. they peeled. But yeah. now that I do them in the Instant Pot, um, and this is only Did new, because any other time I've ever made hard-boiled eggs my entire life, I've made them like mom. And now I make them in the Instant Pot. Five, they call it the 555. So it's five, it takes about five minutes for it to get up to pressure. Then once it's on pressure, five minutes, and then five minutes slow release. So it's like a five, five, five. Works really good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So who do we got next? We have Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi, Liz. How's everybody doing this week? I hope you had a good week. I did. Um, 
I love this subject because I feel like I can talk about food, food all the time and different ideas that we get from, you know, everybody's take. And, and I just love talking about food, um, which is why I'm here <laughs> because I, I get it. I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. But the nice thing about eating this way is that it does give us so much more time. And I, you know, once I was able to get my routine, I do, I have so much more time to do the things that other things that I love. I, I get, I have time to uh, pursue a hobby or clean better or, you know, just life things, but at least I have more time. I've noticed that. So I've talked about it a little bit and I will go in just a little bit more detail. Um, what I do is um, on the week, I have a family. And so I have a husband who works the opposite schedule of me. And so every day he has to bring, he works at night. And so he needs to bring his main meal. And so I have to have everything figured out. And before now my son is in college and, but he still lives with us. But um, before that, I drove him for middle school and high school an hour each way in addition to working. So I had to figure something out. Um, I couldn't cook every day that I didn't have the time. So what I do is I uh, figured out uh, batch, batch cooking, you know, and that's what I called it. And apparently on YouTube, it's a thing. I did not know that, but they call it meal prep. And then they do all this, these fancy things, putting things in advance in little containers. I don't do that. But the key is the container. And that's already been talked about. And we probably discovered Rubbermaid, that Rubbermaid brilliance at this, probably I'm guessing the same time because America's Test Kitchen is what I was watching. And it was a, uh, you know, it just like popped up because I'm subscribed to them, I guess. And that newest video, they were testing out the containers. And I'm always one to, I need the best container that I can find. And once I tried the Rubbermaid Brilliance, I just, uh, there's, I'm going back to anything else. The way I can keep food fresh for as long as I need it, is amazing and also you know the great in the freezer too so um every uh my our protein is you know more of a variety so we will do um chicken breast we will do black soybeans i don't know you haven't talked i don't know if you've tried those black soybeans mm -hmm. they are very good and they're soybeans and so they're high in protein and they're lower in carbs. And so that's why I discovered black soybeans and I get the organic black soybeans and I have to buy them, I think a six at a time on Amazon. I discovered them in our local um, health food store maybe 15 years ago. And, and um, they're of course very expensive buy of the can, but I didn't care because that's you know important to me that we have good protein sources. And then when, once I discovered that they're on Amazon, then I thought, okay, well, I'll just buy, I'll go through six cans. So I bought, start, started doing it that way. The other thing we will do is we'll do ground chicken or ground turkey. And um, that opens up a lot of possibilities when, if you know, you're willing to try that. Um, ground chicken or ground turkey, can be a substitute for what you would make with ground beef years ago. Or I just have been away from ground beef for quite some time. But so that brings in, um, you know, uh, a meat sauce or things like that. The other thing that I really love is turkey tenderloin. And it is delicious. And I, I bake it. Uh, I'll make all of my protein, I'll bake all of my protein during, on the weekend. And then I'll put them, like I said, in these um, containers. And the turkey tenderloin is so good. And I get it at Aldi's and if they don't have it there, then I'll get it at another grocery store. But most of the time, Aldi's has it. And 
I do not cook. I do not cook it the way they say. They say to cook it 55 minutes or almost an hour. I don't. I cook it for 40 minutes and it's juicy and moist. And I undercook it a little bit on purpose because it gets reheated. My husband reheats it at work, you know, in the microwave. And we use my, we don't have any problems using microwave. I have to use microwave at work to reheat my food. And um, so that turkey tenderloin is a real winner. Um, I encourage you to try it if you want to branch out. Uh, turkey tenderloin is delicious. Nice. <clears throat> um, uh, about the salads, um, I was starting, I was starting to get monotony. Yeah, um, I do love my salads, but what I decided to do is to switch it up. Like every week I, I will make my salads on Sundays for the whole week. And so what I do is I will take, when I go shopping, I'll take one special thing and I'll add it. And that will give it a different taste for the week. So example is parsley. I love Italian parsley, but it has a very distinct flavor. And I said, well, I'm going to try, you know, adding um, Italian parsley to my green part of my salad and to see what it does. And my goodness, I loved it. It like woke everything up for that, for the salads that week. It was so good. And the following week, I said, oh, this is available. I'm going to try this. This is jicama. So mm -hmm. I peel the jicama, and then I cube it in the very small cubes. And I add jicama to my salad that week, not the Italian parsley that was last week. This week, my new thing is jicama. And wow, now I have salads. I'm looking forward to it because, wow, I have a whole new taste, you know? Um, and so like, I look around to see what I can, you know, some little ingredient that can give a whole different flavor profile or taste to my salad. And that basically my salads are basically the same every week, every day, every day, every day, except for this one special ingredient that I add to it. And it really, it's, 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 it encourages me, you know, it's like, I'm looking forward to it. So that's, that was a good find. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to, a few comments I wanted to say uh, when you talked about having more time. And it, it's really interesting how, how it takes a lot of time to prepare healthy food. But in the long run, you have more time. Like you just really have more time. Because yeah. it, especially if you're a foodie, because... If you're a foodie and you're 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 not doing this, you're not eating like this. Chances are you're spending most of your life thinking about food, having food, sure. hating yourself, <laughs> and disappointed in yourself, and all that stuff. So yeah, you do. It's incredible how much more time you have. Okay, <laughs> so well, thank you right, so thanks, much. Liz. Yeah, thanks a million. And next we have Bonnie. Hey everybody. Hi Bonnie. Hey, Liz, my goodness, girl, you are doing some cooking over at your house. We need pictures of your food. <laughs> but also, I want to say, Lulu, welcome back. You were gone a few days, and I was actually getting worried. And I was about to reach out and go, has anybody heard from Lulu? Is she okay? Because I knew you were traveling and anything could happen. Um, and then you popped up. And by popped up, I mean coming out of your storage container. That was so funny. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you. So, um, you know, I said a couple of weeks ago, you come to these meetings. Okay, let me rephrase that. I'll come to these meetings because I work and I'm off an hour from a computer all day by the time we have the meeting. And I'll be like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do it, but I don't want to do it, right? And then you come in here and it's always spot on. So this week I did struggle with uh, boredom with food, not enough food. I didn't go off plan or anything, but um, I knew when I started the week, probably by Sunday, because it's like you have to hear, I feel like I have to go to three or four stores to get everything. So I need a trip to Sam's every couple of weeks to get bulk um, items. Like I buy some frozen vegetables and they're in a 16 ounce bag, you know, to keep in the freezer. Um, I try to get my meat from them. I'll get fish from them, which my fish, 
I don't think it's as expensive as yours, but it's orange roughy and I love it, which I'd never had it before till I got it. But um, I noticed it's from New Zealand, I think it was, and it's wild caught. So I'm like, well, that's why it's pricey. Um, but anyway, um, I had gone to Walmart and then you got your, I'm talking about a working person and maybe this is just my own personal problem here. Um, but you know, you're trying to get to the store, maybe to look for food. You just have a lot of things to do on the weekend and I'm not good at going after work during the week. So anyway, um, I thought, well, I'll, I'm going to go to Walmart cause it's close. Now I hate Walmart's produce department because I've gotten so many awful things from them. But I went, there's a few things I'm like, okay, I know what I can get. I'll go get that. And one thing that I have uh, eaten during this journey that I had not really had before, I don't think, was Napa cabbage. And I really loved it. And I'd gotten some from the downtown um, street fair on Saturdays. I forget what they call it, but you know how they'll have all those different vendors and everything organic. And um, Publix doesn't carry it. And... Sam's doesn't carry it, um, and but Walmart does carry it. So I went there and they had one. I found it. I'm like, oh, they have one. Yeah, I pick it up. And the last time I got it, I noticed it had like little bugs, dead bugs. But it's kind of like even organic produce. To me, organic produce a lot of times does not look good because when you don't treat it, you have little holes in it for bug bites and different things like that. But I picked this up and I, I looked, I'm like, oh no, I threw it back on the shelf. And I noticed that all their stuff behind their vegetables was filthy. It really made me ill thinking about it. Um, and did I make it to another store? I don't think I did. So I only had a very few things, plus I was already low or out. And I got home and when I looked, I'm like, it's going to be a hard week. Maybe that was my problem thinking it's going to be a hard week to start with. I made it. Um, I took some more of my... Thankfully, and then I went to a new store. I knew I went somewhere else, Everman, which is a co-op. And they have all this, you know, organic and everything all you guys talk about, you know, keto this, all the different non-mainstream kind of stuff. And let me tell you, I'm sorry. I think they got more junk in that store than they do a regular store. And you can say it's made out of all these great ingredients. It's still junk. Um, their produce department was very small, but they did have a ton of Japanese sweet potatoes. So I was happy about that. I only got like four. I have one left because I've been eating some rice too. And I thought when I go back next time, I'm going to get eight. But um, I, their produce department was small, but I did get an, an eggplant. And it was a pretty good size because they didn't have any small ones. Thankfully, because I had to eat eggplant two days to get vegetables in and stuff but anyway so that's been my struggle i can eat a lot of the same thing over and over but there does come a time when i'm like okay i'm tired of all that and i need something different and what is it going to be and so this has been timely for me because um you know i was like i've been trying to look on the page and see what people are posting that i would be interested in and can make with my repertoire I want to say too, I had bought some ground turkey a little while back because I thought, well, that's going to be like lower calorie and I'll mix it with some beef and I'll have the beef flavor, ground beef, but it'll be lower content. And I didn't check my phone. I have an app on my phone and I didn't check it before I left because the store, because it's ground turkey. When I got home and started putting that in my app, I'm like, this is as much fat as the beef and let me rephrase that so um I, my app i don't want to say what program i use but it's probably a little bit apparent i use it in conjunction with lulu's plan though because the app the program i use they recommend a lot of junk food and i mean junk food on top of it so it's a point value system right and a lot of foods are zero points, but what people don't realize is zero points does not mean zero calories. So you could eat a whole slew of zero point foods every day and then take your daily points you're allowed and go eat a piece of cake. Okay. It doesn't work like that. I mean, but so a lot of people use it that way. So I put this app, I track on my food, I weigh, track, measure. And, um, I had been wanting to do this. Uh, so this week also when I went to Everman's, I did find some Ezekiel 4-9 pita bread, um, which I've never found anywhere. I know they make stuff besides regular bread, but all the stores here just carry the, the, their regular line of bread. So I got that. 
Okay, I bought some boar's head ham and turkey because before I used, when I had lost weight, I ate that. I don't eat a lot of it now because again, I have to be um, careful with my sodium, but I like, I need something different. I also haven't been eating much cheese, even though it's allowed because it's so high in fat, but I dearly miss my cheese. Well, I got some sliced, aged, Swiss, very thin, lacy cheese, so it's very low point. And this week for breakfast, I did um, made them a few different ways. And one day I uh, toasted the pita in the air fryer, and then I put the ham and the cheese on it, and the bread got super crispy, which I like crispy food. And so that was really nice. And then another day I had it and I did it with like ham and cheese and eggs. <clears throat> and so anyway, I say that to say, so, um, I don't remember if I felt like I was retaining fluid or, you know, if that information giver went up and down like it shouldn't have. So I thought, well, I'm going to track, I'd been wanting to do this. I'm going to track my food as far as just caloric intake. Cause I, and lo and behold, I'm like, dang, I'm, I need to eat some more food. I mean, um, like I've only done it three or four days, but the highest point value one day was like 1100, which that's not too bad, but normally you need to be about 1200 and not too much less when you're losing weight, because as we all know, if you eat too little, then your body's going to hold on to it. And one day I had 700 calories. I'm like, and also for me, admittedly, I've not been eating four ounces of all the meats, four ounces of all the grains. Um, and I've been losing weight and healthfully so, but the long story short, I'm like, I think I need to start eating a little bit more food. Um, so I've been increasing the grains to four ounces and sometimes the meat, um, the chick, the boneless, chi uh, skinless chicken thighs. And I used to like to try to get all my stuff and do it myself. Just to reiterate, I used to have breaks of time from work when I didn't work and I could do all the things y'all talk about and I loved it. But now working full time and trying to take care of the house and the yard and everything else, I can't put as much effort as I would like all the time into the food. So that's why I get the frozen sometimes, you know, because I need the convenience of it. Um, and I just went off a rabbit trail that lost. But anyway, I appreciate all y'all's input. And um, it's been a struggle this week. I don't know why, but in my industry, it seems like every time you're about to have a holiday or you're going to take off of work, work gets so crazy that you're you're crazy by the time you get your day off or the holiday. And that's kind of how this week has been. And then um, not having as much food as I would have liked for the different varieties and different things. Also, I don't know if you guys have ever eaten Rick's Picks, Beets or something like that. I got that from Everman's and that little jar was $10.99 and it had like aromatics in it. I thought they were awful. Cannot recommend them. Can't unrecommend them enough, but I'm choking them down um, because I bought them and they were $10.99. Um, they're also not like soft. They're more like hard, which I've never had beets that weren't that way. And I've been wanting to kind of make mine. So now I'm like, okay, well, if I do, I see I might need to cook them more. But um, I am going to join the co-op just because I'm about to be 65 and it's only $8 and they have these freebie things that I might be interested in for educational classes. They said they had like dance classes. I don't know. I'm sure there's a fee associated with it as well, but I'm just going to check that out because um, you can go there and shop without being a member. You just don't get if something's on a, a special for the members, you don't get that. But I'm very happy that they had a big, huge thing of Japanese sweet potatoes because, man, do I love those things. I put them in my food, and I'm just like you, Lulu. I take a bite, and I'm going, mmm. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. people who get upset about you making noise when you eat your food have never put Japanese sweet potato in their mouth because you cannot eat it without going, oh, my God, this is so good. Mmm, yeah. So it makes every meal great. Um I think I might have done them for breakfast. I've done regular potatoes. So you reminded me I could do those for breakfast as well, just to kind of break things up. Anyway, I'm still losing weight and i um, looking forward to telling y'all what the next thing is after June 1st. Excellent. Thank you so much for Hi. Bonnie. Thanks, Bonnie. You're welcome. The only thing I'd add to that, Bonnie, is you said that, that uh, 
sounded like you said you got on the scale and you had a weight gain. And if one, one possibility could be because of um, the deli meats, they have a lot of nitrates in them and salts, especially ham, and you'll retain water. They do, but I, and I looked at them. So I always, everything I buy, I look at the sodium content. And when I did that tracking, I, I did all, I did the fats, the carbs, the sugars, the sodium, because, and I wasn't over, you know, the recommended daily allowance for sodium is only like, um, I think it's 2000 milligrams, which is like one or two teaspoons or something. It's the phenomenally low amount. And I had posted on the Facebook page too about protein. Um, because I thought at first I thought, oh, I'm not hitting my protein target, but I am pretty much hitting my protein target. Um, so, uh, I don't, but I'm sorry. I, that's another thing I missed that because of high blood pressure, I don't eat is ham. I love ham. So, um, you know, it's, it's a one-off if you will, for me, it's not okay. something I'll be able to eat all the time. Yeah. Good. good. All right. I just wanted to. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Yeah, thanks so much, Bonnie. And All right. Next we have Let's, Chris. Shall we finish up with Chris? Yeah. Hi, Let's finish and up I'll with try Chris. To be quick. Um, a lot of really great tips tonight. Um, you know, I am thankful that I can come here when I'm having a struggle. So I've been having a struggle since last week. You know, many of you know that, well, tomorrow will make two months that I've stopped having coffee. And I used to have five, six cups a day, and I got myself to one. But I didn't feel wired if I had one cup of coffee. But for me, part of this journey to health is to break the addictions that I have. So if I didn't have that one cup, I'd have a massive headache by nine in the morning. And I decided that... I wanted to eliminate those things. I wanted to only put into my body the things that would make me thrive. And so one of, you know, my next big project this year is to quit vaping. You know, I used to smoke heavily in the distant past and I started vaping and um, that's one of my goals this year. And so what I did last week was when I went to get my vaping supplies, which I do once a month, I selected, you know, the liquid at half the nicotine that mm. I would not take. And that was last weekend. And I have struggled because I know it's my mind and I haven't gone off the plan. Surprisingly enough, I'm not craving anything that wouldn't be good for me, but I am hungry 24 hours a day. I don't wake up in the morning and feel hungry. I normally have breakfast around 8.30 or 9, and I'll have lunch between 1.30 and 2, and I'll have my dinner usually between 7 and 7.30, except for Thursdays. And I know there's probably no solution, and I don't know if there were any. I know, Lulu, that you had smoked in the past as well. I don't know if there's anything that might help me get over this, because I'm determined not to increase the nicotine, because my goal is by the end of the year if not sooner, not to be vaping. I'm thankful that I'm not craving things that wouldn't be good for me. I'm just hungry all the time. I can have my meal now and 45 minutes, I'm looking like, what's going on? I am hungry. I'm not feeling faint. I'm not feeling queasy, I'm not feeling lightheaded. So I know that I'm not hungry, but you're it's craving. been a struggle. You're craving it's nicotine. Gonna... I think you're craving nicotine. Yeah. And it's, yeah, your yeah. body is con like, you're not going to get more out of what you got because you got the reduced nicotine. So it's just looking for the looking for food instead. Yeah. I've had more tea and more dandy blend. I've had more water. And, um, you know, I just want to throw that out there that addictions are really terrible, no matter what they are. You know, we tend to look at addictions as people who, maybe abuse alcohol or maybe abuse, you know, medications. But, you know, every little thing, like Barbara says, you know, sugar is the devil. Those addictions mm -hmm. really take hold of you. And so I just wanted to share that with you. I'm struggling this week, but I'm forging ahead. So that's mm -hmm. what I wanted to say. Chris, 
question for you about your, I think that's a great idea to reduce the nicotine when you vape. Like, can you go, instead of doing half the nicotine, can you go to like three quarters or something and then kind of wean yourself that way? I think I, just I, think thought. I could have, but I think I was too ambitious. Yeah, so and maybe determination. just a step back. Yeah. Yeah. Not all the way back, but maybe just a quarter step back. But I think that's a really interesting way to do it. Um, you know, in, in the past, um, I had actually weaned myself completely off the vape and um, I kept going down until I had zero nicotine and I would still use it and then I would start forgetting about it. And we had a terrible tragedy in our family and I didn't go to cigarettes, but I mean, I went straight and started vaping again. So I know I can do it. And, and you're right. I didn't cut it that drastically at that time, you know, maybe seven years ago when I gradually reduced the nicotine. So I think I was too ambitious. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, idea. I saw um, uh, I saw a uh, video this week, and it was um, and I kind of talked to you about this a little bit, Lulu. The um, Bright Line eating plan, and it's very similar to Lulu's, except it's four hundred and ninety seven dollars to be a member. So, you know, the difference is Lulu's free. <laughs> I'm a cheap date. And that one costs five hundred dollars. <laughs> So, and I get it, people have to make money, it's her thing. But anyway, she had a very interesting uh, video. She puts videos out on YouTube and, and some of them are interesting. And it goes to your point, Chris. And her video was um, describing um, food addiction to um, chewing your fingernails or uh, chewing a pen cap or when maybe when you were a baby, you sucked your thumb or, or even up to, to some people, you know, I sucked my thumb until I was probably 10. And, and there's a correlation there. Um, I haven't researched it more, but it's, it's all on the same kind of thing where, um, uh, you know, with the vaping as well, it's just an addiction. And so we're just stimulating something. And with the pen chewing and the, you know, thumb sucking, it's, it's, it sets off dopamine in your brain and dopamine mm -hmm. is a calming effect. And so that vaping thing could be setting off dopamine as well as the nicotine addiction that we know about. Right. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a double whammy, Chris. So it's, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's hard, right? You're yeah. strong, you can do it, but it, it, it might take a minute and, yeah. you know, give yourself the grace to do it as yeah. long as you keep trying, yeah. but yeah, and it, it might make you more hungry because now you're, you're looking maybe for another addiction. Right. I always say, do I feel hungry in the gut or do I feel hungry here? Because when I'm hungry here, I don't know, something about my jaw. Uh, when I get that feeling in my jaw, it's sugar. Yeah. It's not, it's not a hunger, but yeah. if I'm hungry in my gut, I eat, or if, like I get the three things that Lily talks about, but right. yeah. Yeah, you got this, Chris. I know it, we got six months left. You can do it. Yep. And even do. if you don't do it, if you're cutting back, if right. you can incrementally cut back, they're all victories, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, Thank you. Yeah. My experience. Oh, go ahead, Julie. I'm going to say my experience with nicotine, it's like the only time it's ever worked for me, I was going to pull the Band-Aid off. Like I, that, I tried. That's how I did it. Cigarettes. I just had to pull it off. But at that time, I ate everything in sight. Yeah. You know, I wasn't concerned. You know, with yeah. what I yeah. ate. But you know, I, like I, I bet it was something else. You right, know, right, right. But you know, and like that's my story too. But not quite in that order. But like you know, I I gave up. I put down the alcohol, and it was December, so January, February, I was smoking and eating. <laughs> My brain's out, my brain's out, right? Right, right? And then by March, I was like, I gotta put one of, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta stop killing myself with food. I gotta stop smoking. I didn't know which one to do first. And I just picked the cigarettes first. And it was just putting them down just 100%. And even though I was eating my brains out, it was hell. It's yeah. hell. And yeah. then the next month, which was April, Mm -hmm. I started following this food plan 100%. I didn't have to um, work up to it. I didn't have to 
I'm not, what I'm doing today is what I did then. Right. Working the plan 100%. I've started, did that on my first day and I did it today. Um, right. And there was a whole new emptiness there. You know, it's like, so, you know, it's like, oh, well, if you, if you, you know, you don't have the food, you don't have the cigarettes, you, or you have the food when you're doing the cigarettes, or you have the cigarettes when you're doing the food. But at the end of the day, you want it all gone. And That's so right. you do have to get to a point where it's all of a sudden it's all gone, you know? That's and right. and yeah. um, so um, I've tried the smoking, doing, um, switching to lights. Yeah, it doesn't work. I don't want lights. So that's basically what you're doing right now is like you're having lights. It's true. You're having lights. It's true. I was like, but, I, I but the, difference, the difference is that, you know, in the past, I was not focused on health through eating as well. Yeah. So I ate everything in sight. Yeah. I wasn't concerned. Yeah. And, but now I, I am determined that I am only going to eat what is good for me. And was I, as I mentioned, I am not craving anything. No yeah, sugar, yeah, yeah. no cake, no this, no that. I just feel hungry, hungry to the point where I'm distracted almost. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's, so, it's, but it's I know not, I have to. Yeah, it. it's not real hunger. It's not you're hungry. You just want to eat. Yeah. That's there's yeah. a big difference. So you just want to eat, right? Yeah. So um, I'm going to say, like, if you could focus, I mean, it's hard. It's, just don't expect it to be easy. No. <laughs> Even if you were eating, it wouldn't be easy. No. It You're just, right. it wouldn't be easy. Okay. So, you know, so when you, when you do that and then all of a sudden you're in a space that you're not drinking, you're not smoking, you're not vaping, you're not eating, you're eating healthy. It's like, Oh, I just got chills because I'm thinking you could just bask in the glory of, I've arrived. I finally tackled the last fucking thing. You know, <laughs> Me? you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes, maybe i'll beat correct. that out i couldn't help it no. i couldn't help it because no, it's kind of like I, you're absolutely I'm right just very passionate so instead of like oh i can't stop because unless i was binging my brains out with food but nah this is when everything's coming full circle you need to just really feel that mm -hmm. feel that mm -hmm. full circle and then it's just like oh my god i've got nothing else to tackle well then you got to tackle you know you know you want to grow spiritually and you want to, you know, right. be a, a, a better version of yourself and living in peace without the distractions of addiction um, and doing something against your own permission. And, right. and, and then once you get there, it's just, it's clean living. It's just mm -hmm. clean living and it just feels really good. It, but it sucks at first. It really sucks. So I think don't expect it to not suck. But right. I just remember, I didn't even know what to do with myself. I was just like, what do I do with myself? Like, I could, like my skin was crawling. I'm like, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> oh, my God. It was, it was just yeah. like nothing to go to, nothing to smoke, and nothing to eat, and nothing to... Yes. Not, yeah. It's not, almost still sad. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. it's just like, wow, I'm just so grateful. I don't need to do any of it anymore. And it's just, but I remember it like it was yesterday because those were my Stop. loves. You got this. So. Just remember when you get this, it's going to suck. And it's going to be the best thing you ever did because you're going to full circle. You're going to be full circle. Yeah. It's good yep. to be in full I'm circle. You, you still got this day. thing. You got still got this thing hanging on you, you know? Yeah. You're not you're not yeah. happy with yourself with it. It's like the last thing I gotta get rid of it. You yeah. Know? yeah, that's what for me it was the last thing was food. So it was the yeah. same thing, only different. Same, you know. But at, at some time they're gonna go in some order, and you know I picked my order, and it was a really hard decision. <laughs> but I was really? like, I need to pig out for another month. <laughs> <laughs> One more month. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the okay. encouragement. Okay. Okay. And Nicole, we'll finish with Nicole. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, Kathleen is pretty scientific. I'm more, what I have to say is more emotional, which is I've never um, smoked and I've never had children, but it, it what you're going through sort of sounds to me like you're birthing your new self and there's some mm -hmm. pains here. And 
you're so inspiring because you're not just trying to get a little better. You're trying to drop all the crutches. So Thank I admire you. you. And Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. So. Thank you very much. One of these days we're going to be on here and you're going to share and you're going to just say, it's gone. Done. 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 Yeah. I'm D for done. Yeah. yeah. But until then, be gentle on yourself and just your, your yeah. day will come. You can't do it. You can't do it until you just, it's your time. Like right now, anybody that's doing this with the food, if you need to do this with the food or you want to do it with the food and then you are doing it, like it's because it's, it's just your time. It was your time to like want to do it right, want to get it right, want to treat yourself better. And then um, sometimes wanting it isn't, isn't enough, you know? Thank you, everybody. Lots of really great ideas. Um, just talking about all these like beautiful, healthy ingredients and colors and textures and um, storage and prep and shopping and just, you know, we're all just, you know, we're doing the best we can. When I say I'm doing the best I can, am I really doing the best I can?